Social media has, without a doubt, changed the way we value ourselves and communicate with others about that value. With just a few taps on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, among many other platforms, anyone can create an idealized image of themselves, a perfect representation of how their life is, and show it off to other people. But internalizing perfection in this manner poses challenges for students' mental health, and this has been the case for the past few years and even in the past few decades. In an article by Study International back in 2018, the notion of student perfectionism is brought up in discussing how, when using platforms such as Instagram or Facebook, students feel pressure to compare themselves to others and set unrealistic expectations for themselves. And with the rise of new forms of media like TikTok, this need to be perfect and catch up with everyone else could lead to feelings of depression and anxiousness. Analyzing these behavioral tendencies reveals the impact of social media use and how it could potentially lead to developing mental illness. Major depressive disorder and anxiety disorder are most often thought about as common conditions stemming from consistent social media use. But is it possible that an underlying perfectionist behavior uh, while using social media is what triggers these disorders? More importantly, could we categorize perfectionism as a mental illness? Determining whether perfectionism is a mental disorder first requires taking a look at what constitutes an overall disorder. Jerome C. Wakefield, a professor of social work at New York University, published an article back in 1992 entitled The Concept of Mental Disorder, in which he looks to define disorder combining social values and biological facts. In this way, a mental disorder would not be viewed as a pure value concept, where the nature of disorder is only social and deemed to be negative by sociocultural standards. A disorder would also not be viewed as a purely scientific and factual concept, and only deemed as a biological disadvantage. The best way to determine a disorder is to combine both social and scientific viewpoints into a hybrid model, which he terms a harmful dysfunction. Describing a disorder as a harmful dysfunction takes into account both facts and values. Focusing on the term dysfunction, this refers to the inability or failure of some mechanism in the organ to perform its function. A dysfunction only arises when an organ or mechanism cannot perform as it is naturally supposed to, independent of social input. It is a natural and factual scientific concept. For example, a heart's natural function is to pump blood, so when it stops pumping, this is considered a dysfunction. This is not enough to describe a disorder, however, because a dysfunction needs to cause significant harm to the person in a socially disvalued way to be considered a disorder. And this is where the term harmful comes in. A condition has to come some harm to a person judged by the standards of that person's culture. Now with the example of a heart ceasing to pump blood, it wouldn't necessarily be harmful in a social or cultural sense. It is simply a dysfunction because it's not doing what it's naturally supposed to do. Therefore, a disorder needs to fulfill two criteria. One, it needs to deprive benefit from the person as judged by the standards of that person's culture. Two, it needs to result from the inability of some internal mechanism to perform its natural function, which is an effect that is part of the evolutionary explanation of the mechanism. Now, using these criteria, we can say that a mental disorder is a harmful mental dysfunction because it, one, causes harm to someone based on the standards of that person's culture, and two, results from the inability of an internal mental mechanism from performing what it's supposed to do. Returning now to the question of perfectionism being a mental disorder, we can use the criteria to establish whether perfectionism falls under the category of harmful dysfunction. One can make a case that perfectionism sets unrealistic expectations and standards and is a trait that is harmful in the social sense. Those who disagree say that perfectionism in a way can lead to more productive growth as a person by setting career and academic goals that allow them to adapt and problem solve. In many ways, perfectionism could be socially encouraged, though not overtly, through expectations set by family, co-workers, friends, and universities. But there are features of perfectionism that are socially frowned upon. Uh, recommendations to overcome this state are prominent in mainstream discourse, and Psychology Today is one such source offering suggestions. Um, because perfectionism often relies on comparing oneself to a desired yet impractical standard, uh, this website discourages a mindset of comparison, and Psychology Today also notes the dangers in this behavior, such as procrastination and an overall lack of creativity. Parental concerns over student perfectionism also indicate a level of social disapproval. 
social psychologist Jane Addams in her article for the New York Times recommends that parents be aware of the downfalls of professional ideals among their students. So we've established that perfectionism is harmful in a social sense, but we don't have any clear evidence to suggest that perfectionism stems from the inability of some mental mechanism from performing its natural function. Feelings of motivation and the overarching desire to be perfect, even at an extreme level, may not be the result of a malfunction in the internal mechanism because the processes that trigger perfectionist ideas uh, may be justified by a theory of evolution. Behaviors that underlie perfectionism, such as the desire to perform at a high level, persist, and be motivated, may have been naturally selected for. The mental mechanisms responsible for, for perfectionism may indicate proper function because it increased in frequency in newer generations. As Wakefield notes, mechanisms that happen to have effects on past organisms that contributed to organisms' reproductive success over generations increased in frequency and hence were naturally selected and exist in today's organisms. The human's ability to survive and reproduce may justify the functional explanations of the mental mechanisms that trigger perfectionism. In a sense, perfectionist attitudes, though viewed as detrimental in a social sense, can be viewed as helpful for our evolution. Perfectionism describes a series of personality characteristics that are multidimensional and the severity of this psychological state may depend on the social context a person finds themselves in. Overall, analyzing perfectionism reveals it more being a problem of living where cultures may disapprove of this behavior instead of revealing some intrinsic dysfunction of a mental mechanism. We've established now that perfectionism may not fall under the category of harmful mental dysfunction, but it could still be part of an underlying mental disorder such as uh, obsessive compulsive disorder. Tying this back to social media use, uh, consistent social media use and achieving this standard of perfection uh, may trigger these disorders to develop and perfectionism could be one small part of an otherwise larger disorder. With the constant rise of social media influence and perfectionism rising among younger generations, treating these disorders will have to be a priority in the near future.